Hi, it's Seta here, and welcome you to the next tutorial where I will show you how to create a foggy day effect in Unity RGDRP. However, before we move on to the tutorial, I would like to inform you that the voting for the 16 Unity Awards has just started. One of the categories is Publisher of the Year, where you can vote for asset creators. I encourage you to vote even more, because in this year, Nature Manufacture was nominated in this category. As you probably know very well, in my videos I most often use their assets, and personally I think they deserve to vote for them, because thanks to this we can appreciate the hundreds of hours of work they put into preparing these models that many of you probably use. Of course, each of you can vote for other creators, but you already know who I voted for. The link to vote you can find in the description. And now, let's get into the tutorial. First, let's see what a foggy day looks like in reality and what we should pay attention when we try to recreate such a lighting. On foggy day, the sunlight is scattered, which makes the shadows very faint and often even invisible. Colors are muted and lack vibrancy, giving the landscape a greyish appearance. Fog often occurs in calm or lightly windy conditions. The color temperature of the light shifts toward cooler tones. Shades of grey, blue and silver tones dominate. The sun, if visible, appears as a blurred bright spot in the sky, often surrounded by slight halo. Visibility during fog is reduced. Depending on the density of the fog, visibility can range from a few meters to several hundred meters. Fog might not be uniform everywhere, forming small clouds and in the area where the fog is thinner, visibility slightly improves, adding some more depth to the scene. Clouds have different densities, so one moment something is visible and next to it disappears as the fog becomes thicker. Now, when we know what to focus on, let's try to replicate this in Unity. In this tutorial I will be using Unity 2022 and the demo scene from the forest environment, but the setting will work with any other asset as well. First, let's add a new global volume to our scene. So, right click, volume, global volume. Now we create a new profile and add override visual environment. Let's select all and we want to use physically based sky. Now we need to add override sky, physically based sky. And now we will want to change our ground tint because its color affects the colors of the scene. So let's change it from brown to dark gray. We can close this physically based sky window. In the next step, we want to add clouds to our sky. I will use a cloud layer for this because it do not affect the performance too much. But if you want, you can use volumetric clouds. So let's select cloud layer and add another override sky cloud layer. Now let's select all. And here we can change the visibility of different types of clouds in our sky. Of course you can mix opacities from different types of clouds, but I will only use those from the green channel. Then using exposure we can set the brightness of our clouds. Now we need to change our sun settings, so let's move on to the directional light. And let's change its rotation to better match to our scene. Then we will change the size of our solar disk. And I will set it to zero because I don't want it to be visible, but you can adjust it as you want. Now let's check if the color is set to white in the emission filter. And let's set our temperature to 8000 Kelvin, because we want to get a little cooler lighting. Let's also reduce our intensity, because since the sun is behind the clouds, it will not give as much light. 
let's go to the shadow settings and let's turn it on and then we can set the resolution to low or mid to the fact that we want to obtain soft shadows so the shadow map doesn't have to a high resolution. Using dimmer we can control the intensity of the shadow so by reducing this value we will get brighter shadows but we want to blur them. So first let's go to edit project settings quality hdrp and then find the shadow filtering quality options. There let's set it to high and yes these settings does affect performance but thanks to it we have more control to our shadows. Now our shadows have some additional options. If you don't see them click on these three dots and check if the show additional property is checked. So if any options is not visible in your settings, always check if this option is enabled. Using minimal blur intensity, we can control the sharpness of shadow edges. The higher the value, the softer the shadows will be. So let's set it to one here to increase this shadow blur. We can even more blur our shadows using angular diameter scale, which is related to our angular diameter. So if we increase this value here and then change the value in the angular diameter scale, we can increase the blurring of the shadow even more. The higher the value, the blurrier the shadow will be. Now we need to add volumetric fog to our scene, so go to global volume, add override, fog, let's select all, let's enable this fog and select volumetric fog enable. Using maximum height we can set the upper limit to which our fog will be generated. Using base height we can determine the height at which the fog density begins. Thanks to this we can control how the fog is distributed vertically on the scene, which affect how thick the fog will be at different heights. Fog diameter determines the density of the fog and thanks to it we can control how far the surrounding will be visible. For different scenes this value will be different and it depends only up to you what effect you want to get. Max fox distance determines how far the fog should be rendered and this value should always be greater than our camera far clipping plane. To the fact that it's a quite close scene I will reduce this value to 1000 meters. Next we can determine at what distance our fog will be volumetric, so I will increase this value a bit. Anisotropy affects the way light scatters through fog. The value of zero makes fog scatter light evenly in all directions, but we want to get an effect when the light is more condensed around the sun, so we need to increase this value. Now we need to change a few things in the directional light, so let's click on them. First, we want to make the light that only passes through fog a little brighter, so let's increase the intensity multiplier. To obtain the effect of fog wrapping objects, let's reduce this shadow dimmer value to something around 0.1. Now we can again adjust the size of the Santis to get the effect that we want to achieve. Next, let's move on again to the shadow map and let's enable contact shadow. Go to the global volume and add override, shadowing, contact shadow. Let's enable all, enable state and let's decrease a little opacity because we don't want to the contact shadow to be too strong. We will also use micro shadow to add shadow to the terrain based on the normal maps. So let's enable this and let's decrease opacity to around 0.5. Before we go to the color correction, let's first add a reflection prop to our scene and then let's bake it. As you see, our scene has changed a little. I will also use screen space global illumination to simulate the effect of global illumination in real time. So after enable it in the project setting, let's add override screen space global illumination and enable. 
As you can see, after using Reflection Probe and SSGI, our scene looks completely different now. First we will change the tone mapping in our scene, because HDRP use ACS tone mapping, which is good, but it will automatically improve contrast and change colors, and we want to set everything ourselves, so let's add a new override, post-processing and tone mapping. Let's select all and set mood to neutral. Now we have neutral tone mapping, which only minimally affects the appearance of the scene. So let's add a new override, post-processing and color adjustments. Let's select all and let's increase this contrast like this and let's decrease the saturation. Now we will want to recover some of the details in the shadow. So add new override, post processing and shadow mid-tone highlights. Let's enable shadows and let's increase this a little bit. Now let's add a new override lightning, indirect lightning controller and let's select all and set indirect diffuse to 4 and this makes the details more visible. Now we want to correct exposure so add new override, exposure, select all and set fixed exposure to adjust the scene brightness. Then let's go back to our reflection probe and set the multiplier to 2. Of course, using the options shown in this chapter, you can customize the scene as you like. To diversify the appearance of the scene, we will now add fog clouds to it. We will use volumetric samples for this, and to install them, let's go to the window, then let's select Package Manager, Unity Registry and Phi High Definition Render Pipeline and select Samples. Now find Volumetric Samples and import them. After import you got a new folder, so go to the Volumetric Samples, Refab and find Cloud Sample and then put them on the scene. Now in the volume, you can change the size of this local volume fog. Let's increase this to 50. And then in the fog distance, you can increase or decrease the density of the fog. Let's go to the mask material and change here a few things. First, let's increase the mine noise stealing and then let's decrease the contrast of this fog, like this. I will now turn on the always refresh on my scene to better demonstrate the next options. And now in the animation tab, we can change the direction of the fog and its speed. As before, it's up to you what the final effect will look like. I encourage you to play around with those options, because they can help you achieve some really interesting effects. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope it was useful for you, and if you have any questions, just write them in the comments. Remember to vote in the Unity Awards, and till the next time, see ya!